Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to look into today is the unsolved disappearance of the Jameson family. And this one I did find very very strange and so have a lot of other people. I'd just like to let you know, I mean no disrespect to anyone I'm going to talk about. I've just gathered this information off the internet and covered it into a video for educational purposes. So let me just get into who was actually a part of the Jameson family. We have Bobby Dale, who was 44 years old, his wife, Sherry Lynn Leanne, who was 40 year old, and their six-year-old daughter, Madison Stormy Starr. And they were actually seen for the very last time on the 8th of October, 2009, before they just completely vanished. The family actually had this plan that they were gonna go and purchase this plot of land. It was around 40 acres and it was near a place called Red Oak. The family actually lived in Eufaula, Oklahoma, and this land was around about 30 miles away from there. And they were last seen in this area by a witness that lived in the mountains. And he also stated that he didn't see anyone else in the area apart from the Jamesons. Now the family's plan for this land was quite bizarre. So they planned on buying this land and they had this storage container that they were going to bring all the way over to this plot of land and they were going to live in it. Now, I don't know whether they were going to live in it while they got permission to build a house or what. I just don't know the terms behind it, but that was their plan. The police began their investigation. They tried to find the family. And they did actually manage to get this CCTV footage from outside the home. It was of the family packing up to leave. And this is when it just gets very, very odd. The behaviour that they are showing is just so strange. Just take a look for yourself. As you can see, they're not communicating with each other at all, and it almost looks like they're in some sort of trance, like they're packing up to go and see this plot of land, and they're not even speaking to each other, and then they stop, they stand there, and they stare like off into space for a few seconds, and then they carry on, and they keep doing that, and it's just weird. It also shows Sherilyn put this brown briefcase into the pickup truck. The police do in fact believe that this briefcase is quite important to the case, as they've never actually been able to find it, which is really strange. Again, on the 16th of October, eight days after the family were last seen, some hunters out in the area came across the first major discovery in the case. They found the Jameson's pickup truck abandoned in Latimer County, Oklahoma. Now inside this truck, they found their wallet, their purse, a sat nav, a mobile phone. They had $32,000 of cash stashed in this bank bag underneath kind of the driver's seat. They also found the family dog, Maisie. She was badly sort of malnutritioned, but amazingly, she was still alive. Now, going to the large sum of money found in the car, you may think that it's strange for people to carry around that kind of large sum, which, yeah, okay, it is. But apparently, for the Jameson family, it wasn't. That was something that they did very often. They were well known by people for carrying these huge amounts, like these large sums of money. Bobby's mobile was found in the car and when the police looked into it, they came across this picture of Madison. It's believed to have been taken the day before they all went missing. Now many people have found this picture incredibly strange and a lot of people thought that Madison actually looked really uncomfortable and it looked forced and possibly that she even looked upset in the picture. Even though that she did kind of look happy in a sense, people really do believe that it isn't natural, it doesn't look natural and it looked forced. The circumstances around that, of course, we don't know. As I said, they didn't find the briefcase that was that Sherilyn put in the car. And she also had a small caliber handgun, which they also did not find. A key point to mention here was that there were no signs of a struggle around the car, in the car, around the surrounding area. The police looked around the area thinking that maybe they'd gotten lost in the woods or something and they couldn't find the way back. Maybe they'd gone exploring, they'd got injured. Who knows, anything could have happened to them, but there were just no signs of one. Former Latimer County Sherry Israel Beecham would eventually state, I think they were forced to stop and get out of the truck by someone they recognised and I think they either left willingly or by force. The police took a look at the sat nav and they found that the, they'd actually been a little bit further up the road, sort of up a nearby hill, before their car was eventually found down the road. 
So they followed the GPS coordinates to that location, and that's where they came across these footprints. Once more, nothing came of it. On the 17th of October, the search for the family ignited, and it was huge. There were over 300 people, including authorities and volunteers, all out looking for this family. It included dogs, mounted force. They would search the air, the ground, just all looking for the Jamesons. But no matter what they did, no matter how many hours they put in it, how many how many men they put in it, and women, they just couldn't find anything. And the search was eventually called off. So where did this family go and why did they leave? That will be answered on the 16th of November of 2013. More than four years after this family went missing, two hunters were out scouting for deer hunting locations. When they came across the partial skeletal remains of two adults and one child in a remote spot in Latimer County, less than three miles from where the pickup truck was originally found. They searched around the area and they eventually uncovered shoes bits of clothing along with numerous bone fragments. Tests were done on the individuals although it was believed that it was the Jamesons, obviously they have to confirm it anyway, and it was officially confirmed on the 3rd of July in 2014 to be the Jameson family. And because of the heavy state of decomposition after so many years of being outside, they could never determine their actual cause of death. The bodies were found lied face down all next to each other which to me is just a really odd position to be in but again they were just too badly decomposed and even some of the bones were missing they didn't find all of the bones dr joshua lanta the medical examiner who performed the autopsy stated that there was no evidence of trauma but it also couldn't be fully ruled out due to the remains being incomplete he also could not rule out disease and stated that there was posthumous damage by animals and his final report would say that the deaths occurred under suspicious circumstances. Even though they'd now found the bodies, it didn't bring any new light to the case whatsoever. So that's it. That's all the information we have on the Jamesons. That's literally everything. And now we're going to get into the theories that people, what people believe happened to them. The first theory is that the family just wandered into the woods, possibly got lost, couldn't get back, and they died due to hypothermia and exposure. The second theory is that Bobby's father, Bob, actually had something to do with the deaths. Six months prior, Bobby actually filed a protective order against Bob, saying that his father threatened to kill him on two separate occasions. He also claimed that his father hit him with a vehicle and he was in a lawsuit with his farmer, father at the time of his disappearance. He stated that he was a very dangerous man who thinks he's above the law. And his mother actually got the CCTV from which the police took, obviously, those strange last movements from. She got that installed because the family were worried. They, she did it for their own protection against Bob. He said that his entire family was scared for their lives. He was in fear at all times. So that really doesn't look good in the consideration that they could have been murdered. Could it be possible that it was his father? Well, he did actually have a solid alibi by all accounts. But other people have speculated that maybe he hired someone. I mean, we just don't know. Bob actually passed away in 2009, and so if it was him, we probably will never know. The third theory is that the Jamesons were involved in drug dealing, and this is quite a popular theory amongst sort of the internet sleuths and things like that. Investigators and internet sleuths would cite, obviously, the large amount of cash that they found in the car and how strangely they were acting on the CCTV. So I can kind of understand this theory. And it could be possible with obviously that large amount of cash, but at the same hand, they were well known for that. And maybe they were in kind of a trans-like state because they had taken something. The fourth and last theory that I'm going to go through with you today is the murder-suicide theory. I don't know, they had a bright future planned, but anybody at any point can just snap. So... Yes, okay, they had all these plans and they were going to do all this stuff, but you just don't know what's going on in people's heads. No one really knows, and maybe, although they were happy, they had no real issues, they were this loving family, maybe there was just this darkness underneath that nobody knew about. There's also a suspicious letter, according to one source, that was 11 pages long. It was found, apparently, in the truck. This letter was a hate letter written from Sherilyn to Bobby, in which she would accuse him of being a hermit. There was also another letter found in the home that would go on about death 
and Sheriff Beecham would actually state that they were certainly a family obsessed with death. Sherilyn's mother repeatedly has stated over the years that they were good parents and that they would never ever take the daughter's life. So we just don't know. I'm very much of the thought that anyone can snap at any point, no matter how good your life may be. Sometimes just being alone with your own thoughts can be the worst place to be. And it can be very toxic up there. So I don't know. It's all, it's always possible. Any, any of these theories are possible. Sherilyn's mother does really think that somebody did murder them. But the problem is nobody knows what happened. All we can do is speculate on what we do know. And the sad facts of the case is that we probably will never know what happened to them. And it will probably always remain a mystery. What are your guys' thoughts on this case? I'd really like to know if you think one of the theories I've mentioned or maybe there are more out there. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Maybe there's some that I haven't actually come across and that's what you guys believe. I found this case really strange and of course sad. They're all sad, don't get me wrong. This family just randomly went out there, they packed up the things and they were just never seen alive again. The little girl was only six. And their families still to this day don't have a clue what happened to them. Hopefully one day maybe it will get solved and they will finally get the closure that they deserve. So yeah, if you guys have any more suggestions, let me know. I will look into them for you. Give me a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of the Jameson family. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.